Well, hi, everybody. Welcome to the Eddie Sutton Show. No games for Oklahoma State this past week, but Eddie, perhaps the most important week of the semester, it was finals week at Oklahoma State. Well, it is the most important week uh, because uh, I think oftentimes coaches forget the main reason young men are in school, and that's to get their degree. And so you have to cut back during this period of time. We had a lot of our players in great shape going into finals. We had a couple of them that really needed to score high on, on, in one of their classes to elevate their grade. But I think overall we're going to come out in good shape there. But it really disrupts your practice schedules because many times you don't have your entire team there and you have to work with individuals rather than working together as a ball club. You try to keep the team at the same level they were going into finals. That means can you keep them in the, in the same condition? And uh, then hopefully this weekend uh, we'll have some hard practices uh, that we can get ready for really a tough week. Four games in seven days. We play three games at home next week. Uh, we open with Alcorn State on Monday night. Then we host uh, College of Charleston on Wednesday. We've got a 65 game uh, home court winning streak against non-conference opponents and then an SMU on Saturday. So we're going to be severely tested. But College of Charleston is really a very, very good basketball team. Not that SMU and Alcorn aren't, but Charleston beat uh, Stanford in the Great Alaskan Shootout, beat Arizona State, a team that beat us last week. So they are for real. They'll be a ball club, I think, will be in the NCAA at the end of the year. Who made that schedule? I think either Sean or Randall, but if I find out which one it is, I may dock them some way. You know, you mentioned the four games in seven days. This team probably needs to play. This is a tough week to practice. Can we get a little progress report? Have some of the vets stepped it up since we last visited? You know, I just don't uh, think we're achieving at the level that we should be, uh, Tom, and I have been disappointed, especially in our veteran players. It's hard to get on freshmen at this stage of the season because they are going to be inconsistent. They're going to be up and down. But our veteran players should be playing better, especially at the defensive end. Uh, I don't think our defense is what it should be, and that's one area that we've really got to go back to the uh, court and work harder on because that's got to be our salvation. We're going to get into the injury situation a little bit later, but one of our favorite people, one of former Cowboy, been around the program for the last couple of years in an unofficial capacity, Corey Williams. He's gone. He's gone overseas. Well, Corey Williams uh, was here this uh, fall semester and, and finished up his exams uh, earlier in the week and uh, wants to go into coaching. And uh, he uh, finished all of the uh, requirements for his degree. So he, now he's a graduate of Oklahoma State. And he had an opportunity to go over to uh, Taiwan where he played last year. And I don't think he really wanted to go. But the money was so big. And I told him, I said, you need to go over there for two or three years and, and save some of that money. And then we'll get you in coaching. But He's uh, certainly uh, been a real asset to our program when he was a player. And, of course, he hasn't been coaching this year. He's helped us in the office. But he's just a good person to have around with uh, all those young players. Yeah, I think he was a little uh, torn about getting on that plane heading out because he wanted to see these guys continue to develop. You talk about a guy who developed. Now, Adrian Peterson, if the game at Arizona State was any indication, Pete has his stroke back. We're back here to take a look at Pete and a lot more after this opening. Time out. Welcome back to the show. And Eddie Pete's five trays, 23 points. I think that highlighted the game at Arizona State. But Keani really appeared to work pretty hard on both ends of the court. Chad played well in his first start. And the 11 trays, I know how to make you happy. Well, I thought we shot well enough from uh, behind the arc. Uh, anytime you hit 11 out of 24 from three-point range, you normally are going to win the ball game if everything else is equal. But it wasn't equal. Uh, we had 21 turnovers, and they had 12 blocks, which meant 33 possessions, you didn't get the ball up on the iron. That's and, a lot uh, of possessions. That's a lot to overcome, mm -hmm. uh, to come within one point. Well, I guess we had to do some things well, but I think the biggest thing uh, that came out of that game was the fact that Pete did break out of his his uh, shooting uh, slump. He'd hit one out of 14 in the, the uh, four previous games, but in this game he, he, he shot the ball with a lot of confidence. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, he was uh, five out of 10 from beyond the arc three-point range. I don't know, talking to him after the game, because he seemed relieved. Obviously, he would have traded all those trades for a win, but he seemed relieved that, hey, he had the rhythm again from the floor, which he didn't have going out to Arizona State. Well, they played uh, kind of a matchup zone, mm -hmm. and uh, we had a hard time scoring inside. Uh, it's hard for me to comprehend, because it had never happened before in any of my uh, days as a coach. They had 12 blocks, and the guy that was blocked eight of them was only six foot six. Quick jumper. But 11 of those blocks came 
uh, inside the paint, which means that you had the ball inside, but we weren't able to convert. And when you look at our front line, Alex, Jason, and Maurice Robinson, they're four out of 17. So most of our scoring came from the perimeter. And I think that uh, both Arizona State and our ball club, if we played like we did in this contest, both of us are going to have a hard time winning when we get to conference play. You couldn't ask for an easier home road game. I, I don't guess. believe I've ever been in an arena the where uh, there was no home court advantage, really, other than the fact that uh, they get to practice on that court every day. Beautiful arena, beautiful campus, great facilities there at Arizona State. And they had about 4,000 people, no band, no cheerleaders. And when a coach would yell out to instructions, everybody in the arena could hear what he was saying. I know darn well they heard you, especially in the first half when you told them to take it into the six hole, take it down low against that zone. When you were given those instructions, everybody in that section behind you could have followed them, followed them through. Well, the first half, I thought uh, offensively, we played pretty well. When you, you try to get the ball inside against any defense, but against the zone, you try to get it inside or you try to get it down to the baseline, flatten the zone out. And here's a good example. We got it down to Keanu on the baseline. Uh, he misses the shot there, but he follows it back up. And we led at halftime 35 to 30. For the game, you know, we only shot 40%. They shot 45%. But uh, neither team, I didn't think, uh, played as well as uh, they did a year ago. And we had that great game here at our place, and the score is 90 to 85. And both of us, I thought, uh, played better, and I think we had better ball clubs at that point. Chad had his first start and played well, especially in the first half. He had three trays in the first half, second half he went scoreless, and uh, Chad hasn't been playing as many minutes as we played in this ball game. I think he got a little fatigued in the second half. Well, again, he was hot early, and the Cowboys had it. A five-point lead at halftime, as you said, really had an opportunity to go in maybe seven or eight points up, as I remember Pete had the last shot in the final 20 seconds. We held the ball uh, for the uh, last shot of the first stanza and uh, he had about a 15 footer and just missed it. But 35-30 at halftime, second half, uh, things got worse. What did you tell him at halftime? Again, you, you felt like the game was probably gonna come back to you, but the Cowboys actually jumped out and got up by eight early in the second half and seemed to have everything going their way. About a minute or so, a uh, minute 17 stretch, 10 points they ran off and then we were in a ball game again. Well, they had some trays on us. They, you know, basketball is a game of momentum, and when you have the momentum, you try to extend it. And when you lose a momentum, well, then you try to curtail it as quickly as you can, and, and we didn't do a very good job. You can stop momentum a lot of times with a timeout. You can stop it by putting them on defense, which we didn't do a very good job of. We shot the ball pretty quickly there during that stretch, and they came down in transition, got a couple of easy shots uh, inside. Uh, and then they hit a couple of trays out on the perimeter, and all of a sudden we were trailing in the ball game. So hopefully we learned some from this ball game. You know, it's a game that when the season's over, I think we'll look back and say we should have won that because I really think we're a better team than Arizona State, but we didn't. And you can't dwell on what has happened in the past. You got to build on that. And we have come back this week, even though we haven't been able to have hard practices with final exams. Uh, I think we've been able to outline some things that our players must understand that we must get better if we are going to be a good basketball team. Well, it was a whirlwind 36 hours for Oklahoma State as the Cowboys took their first road trip, true road trip of the year, and we'll go on the road with OSU after these messages. Well, the journey out west last weekend was certainly a business trip for Oklahoma State. Basketball, and books. That was the menu in Tempe, Arizona, and that's the subject of this week's Off the Court feature. The Valley of the Sun is a great place to visit at this time of the year. Those 70 degree temperatures make you forget the cold winter winds that sweep across Oklahoma in December. But Oklahoma State wasn't taking a vacation last weekend when the Cowboys headed west to meet Arizona State. It was all business in every sense of the word. The Cowboys began their whirlwind 36-hour journey when classes ended around 1 p.m. on Friday. After the vans were packed, it was off to Tulsa to catch a 315 flight. As mentioned, finals started this past Monday at OSU. The two and a half hour flight to Phoenix provided a perfect study hall at 35,000 feet, no less. Academic counselor Chris Campbell was an important member of this travel party. He was there to help in any way he could. Campbell held another study session later that evening in the hotel and yet another following the game on Saturday evening. Night had already fallen on the desert by the time Oklahoma State arrived. It was straight to the spacious University Activity Center 
for a short workout. Sun Devil coach Bill Frieder, a longtime friend of Eddie Sutton, was on hand to offer a few of his own observations. He sold me Papa Shot. You know the Papa the Shot, the basketball machines? Eddie Sutton sold me that franchise. And I took it into Michigan and Canada. And uh, Eddie's been a good friend of mine. Eddie was a friend of mine when I was an assistant at Michigan. And um, which, you know, a lot of head coaches don't visit with assistants. And he, you know, he took a lot of time with me and talked basketball and talked strategy. And then when I became head coach in 1980, we became good friends. I recruited Sean. Sean visited uh -huh. Michigan when Eddie was at Kentucky. And our families are great, great friends. We've had a nice rivalry together. We played the uh, first national television game on CBS in 1981 down in Fayetteville. And we got a lot of history between us. He's a little jealous of your golf cart. Tell us about the golf cart. Well, that's the Freeder Mobile. When I came here, that was one of the things I negotiated. I had to have a golf cart. I had to have a lot of things, but I had to have a golf cart to get along. Now you drive that all over campus? I don't drive it, but my coordinator drives me when I need to go somewhere. You think Eddie what, should have a, a He golf should have a golf cart, sure. I mean, you think sure, you're going to put that as, in? As a big timer as he is and as uh, stature as he is, he should have a golf cart on campus. With his name on it. With his name on it and be able to park anywhere he wants on campus without getting a ticket. Then it was more study and tape watching before turning in for the night. Following the game and a brief dinner, the Cowboys were back at the airport waiting for their flight home. Thoughts again turned to the upcoming week of finals. It was an early morning arrival at Will Rogers Airport in Oklahoma City. Then the long van ride home. The clock in Gallagher Iba Arena said it all. But no time to rest. That first final exam was only a little more than 24 hours away. As always, a great feature. You know, uh, we were given permission to go on the road and play that game because it's dead week and normally we don't play any ball games on the road, but it was the only time we could get the game scheduled and I really am appreciative of the athletic cabinet and the university for allowing us to do that. And so we really did utilize our time. When we weren't eating, sleeping, or playing basketball, we were studying. And I hope it paid off this week in our final exams. Now, you talk about Bill Frieder. <laughs> now, there's a character. He's got one of the great contracts of any basketball coach in America. But he, that, what he said was true. When he went from Michigan to Arizona State, he's got all these things, these contracts. And he, and he said, I want a golf cart so I can go anywhere on the campus, and that's what he does. He has his own chauffeur, too, <laughs> on top of that. But he thinks you ought to have one, as he said, and you'd be able to park anywhere here on campus and never get a ticket. So he promised me we'd have to send that tape to him so he, uh, we, he could show that he was actually on the show, and we appreciate him joining us. Now, he's more than ready, I'm telling you. He being Brett Robich, 6'11", he's more than ready to make that debut as an Oklahoma State Cowboy, and we're going to hear from Brett when the Eddie Sutton Show continues in a moment. Welcome back to the Eddie Sutton Show. You know, it's been 11 months, one week exactly, since Brett Robich played in a real basketball game. Needless to say, he's ready for this wait to come to an end. It's been uh, pretty bad the last couple of weeks. really wanted to get out there and help my teammates and just, you know, have a chance to compete again. It's been a, you know, a long year, but it's finally come around. Looking forward to it. We've been struggling a little bit. Uh, it's going to take us a little more time to get together and play a little better as a team. Uh, I think that's our main problem right now, and just this week we really got to work on that and come together more as a team, uh, get a little more emotion and uh, play a little bit better together, and uh, hopefully I can help out a little bit. I'm sure I'll be a little bit rusty the first couple games, uh, kind of worried about the physical shape. I'm probably not in quite as good a shape as I should be, and uh, game shape is a little bit different from practice, so it'll probably take a few games just to get in the shape physically, and uh, probably a few games to get some of the rust off that uh, haven't having not played for a year. What do you bring to the lineup? Uh, hopefully a little bit of leadership, another uh, older person who can help out uh, with the young guys and just be a, li uh, a little bit of a, a leader, bring some emotion, uh, hopefully some inside play. Uh, we've been lacking a little bit there. Uh, some games we have it and some games we don't. So hopefully that can uh, come a little bit more stable and we can have an inside game every game. Uh, rebounding and defensively, hopefully that can help out too. I know you're proud of the progress your brother Scott has made. Yeah, he's really surprised me. Uh, the last few weeks he's gotten, he's made tremendous improvements. 
Um, I thought that he was going to struggle a little bit all year, and he's really impressed me the last couple of weeks with the way he's been playing. Uh, he played very well last night in the scrimmage, as a matter of fact, and uh, I was impressed. He just seems to keep getting better, and I think he's going to be a great player. I'm sure both my parents are going to be real, uh, real proud of both of us when they come up next week. Uh, hopefully we'll have the opportunity to see us both play a little bit together, uh, watch us both play. His dad was such a great player for the University of Kansas. I think he's third or fourth in the all-time scoring for the Jayhawks. Uh, his parents are going to be in attendance Monday evening when we play uh, Alcorn. And, you know, it's the first brother combination that Oklahoma State has had where they play together. You know, Sean and Scott were here at the right. same time, but uh, Scott was uh, redshirting the year that uh, when Sean was a senior. So they're the first two since Dickey and Houston Nutt back in 1980. And, you know, we might mention Houston Nutt had an outstanding year at Murray State this year as a football coach. And Dickie Nutt is a head basketball coach at Arkansas State, a team that we will play after next week, a week from this coming Monday, we'll play them. You talk about a small world. Athletics is a small world. But this world, the Cowboy world, is going to get a little bigger when 6'11 gets in the paint. I know that's a welcome sight to you. Well, I think that uh, Brett uh, mentioned uh, two or three things that I think he'll help us with. I think the fact that he's in his fourth year of college, he's mature. Uh, he will give us some, some uh, lift there as, as far as leadership. Uh, I think he'll give us much more uh, power as far as offense and defense because he's 6'11". He's got great experience. He's played in the Big Ten. And uh, believe me, he's waited a year. I think the coaching staff and his teammates have waited a long time. But I think he's got a point. Anytime you lay off that long, it takes a while to get everything back in the way it was. So we're pleased that he's going to be eligible. Well, each week at this time, we're going to empty out the reporter's notebook, bring you up to date on some information maybe that you've been wanting to hear all week long, really tie up some loose ends. And, hey, let's start with the still status now. You've answered this a hundred times. What about his possibility of playing again? Well, that was a big loss to our ball club because I think that uh, Estelle, of all the freshmen, probably had made uh, about as much progress as any of them, and he was really one of our best uh, defenders on the perimeter. And uh, when he, he broke that arm the other day, uh, it was really a blow to, to our basketball team. But it looks like that he can't possibly be back for at least four weeks. At that time, we'll see how the ball club is doing, what kind of condition he's in. You know, it's his left arm, so he can do a little shooting in a while, and then also he can ride the bicycle and try to stay in decent shape. But at this point, I would say it's 50-50 that uh, we'll ask for a medical red shirt, and I'm sure we'll be granted that uh, unless we really need him. Uh, but, you know, you take four weeks from now, you're going to be in the middle of uh, January. Seemed like every week last season we talked about the free throws that didn't go in. Let's talk about the ones that are going in this year. Cowboys shooting almost 65% from the line over the first five games. Much better uh, uh, percentage from the uh, free pitch line. Uh, uh, we worked extremely hard on that because last year we finished 17 and 10, and three of the games that we lost, it was lost. They were lost just because we couldn't hit the free talk, free pitches. So, you know, I think that's something that we went into the season and we told our players we must improve, and we are a better free throw shooting team. A couple of scrimmages this past week, I think uh, the numbers were pretty. Pretty good, something well, like I, 30 to 34. I think we had 32 like out of 38 yeah. in the scrimmage, and uh, but the Robish has had uh, 15 out of 15. So when those guys start playing, they'll help us there. All right, we got to run through here right now on Scott Robish. Again, we talked about that with Brett. Scott's going to have a little more playing time. He is uh, quickly developing, and I think that uh, he is going to get more and more playing time. Okay, $18 tickets. Now, it might be your last opportunity to watch the Cowboys play these three games, Monday the 16th against Alcorn State. The 18th against College of Charleston. We talked about that in Southern Methodist the afternoon of the 21st. All three tough games, three games we need to win to improve our record. You know, the Big, big 12 right now has a, a record of 59-11. and 11. That's an outstanding <laughs> record. Kansas is no doubt the best team in the country, but we've got three other teams in the top 25. So it's going to be a tough, tough Big 12 schedule. That's why we've got to get better. Well, thanks for joining us on this week's Eddie Sutton Show. For Eddie Sutton, I'm Tom Dorado. Goodbye, everybody.